Electronic Arts was founded over 40 years ago and it is a company worth over 30 billion dollars and it continues to grow with over 10,000 employees worldwide. Now of course it has its fair shares of secrets and we are going to be taking a look at them and uncovering them in this video. In particular we're going to be focusing on FIFA that is the game we are most interested in and that is what we're going to be focusing on and you are going to want to watch until the end of the video because EA were actually taken to court and they had multiple lawsuits filed against them which we are going to be all taking a look at. Now first of all to start off we do have player licensing. This is of course a huge part for EA Sports. They need all of the naming rights not only for the clubs but also the players and they need the player faces as well. Now you may remember in 2020 we did have Zlatan Ibrahimovic accusing EA Sports that his name and player face were used without his permission and obviously this is generating EA a lot of revenue and Ibrahimovic was saying he's not getting any of that he's not benefiting in any way so obviously he's not going to be happy about it. Gareth Bale also replied to this and he basically uh, agreed to this and he said there's investigations pretty much which need to be done. Now Ibrahimovic's agent did speak to the Telegraph and he said quite a lot of stuff. He wasn't too happy at all but he did say that there were hundreds of other players who were also complaining and reporting about the same thing and they were actually deciding whether or not they should go to court with EA but unfortunately that didn't actually end up happening but it definitely seems very shady. Fifth Pro is where EA Sports claim they get all of the licenses um, and also they say that they've got the club licenses which involves the player licenses but Ibra's agent was strongly against that saying it's all sort of just waffly and uh, they're just using the player rights without actual any permission and there isn't any payment or any benefit to the players themselves. Next we do have outsourcing. Now EA Sports are presumed to be employing cheaper workers from other countries. That is essentially what outsourcing is. It's when a huge company like EA based in let's say America, if they were to hire people from America it would be very expensive so instead they choose different countries let's say countries like Romania or India or the Philippines and they just get remote workers from there. Now I do believe in this because we do actually know that Electronic Arts EA do have offices in Romania so that is pretty much evidence and I do also believe some graphic designers and other employees are hired from these countries. Now outsourcing isn't anything illegal but it is sort of some people could argue immoral or unethical especially when a company like EA Sports are earning billions from FIFA point sales etc and they choose that they're just strictly going for maximizing their profits. You can see where this is a little bit on the gray area but again it's not really technically against the law. Following that something which is involving the law is actually EA's patents. They do have many different patents. This was actually shown online. Maybe if you guys want to see a video of me specifically going back to this. This was quite a few years ago uh, but all of this this was published online. I do believe patents do need to be online. It's sort of somewhere in Google. They can still be found today and it's all publicly available. There's loads of pages but we do have dynamic difficulty adjustment that can be found. There are also in here you can find prediction models and this is trying to keep users playing for uh, as long as possible and keep them hooked essentially to ultimate team and feeding into this money machine. So again it's not really ethical. It's not really morally correct but there's loads of technology companies that do this. We have Facebook, Instagram, they try and make the colors, everything like that uh, to try and keep people hooked on as long as possible and get their attention. But I don't see why EA Sports would create a patent if it isn't something that they're actually going to be using. So people who dispute dynamic difficulty adjustment, there is literal evidence that EA do have patents for it. Um, so this again is one of EA's dark shady areas. Moving on from that point, we do have the fact that there is a new game every single year but there aren't really any significant changes. What I hear from all of my friends and people who don't really play FIFA too often when you compare it to other games, they are always complaining that every September there is a new game but there isn't really much changed. And has this just become a habit for EA Sports? Are they able to, to charge everyone £50 every single year? And it's even increasing now. Uh, a lot of people as well do get Ultimate Edition. But how much does actually change? And when EA do change things, 
all of their focus has just been shifted over to Ultimate Team. I used to see where there was communities with pro clubs and there would be every single year they'd be asking for changes, they'd be excited. Now they don't even ask for changes. The pro clubs community I've just seen have been quiet because they didn't get the changes. It's now just been merged with the Volta or something and it's just completely ruined that experience. Career mode, there has been some new features but that as well, uh, there, there is huge missed opportunities. He is just focusing all of their attention on what is making money, which is Ultimate Team. And again, all of their focus is just on trying to make more and more profit which isn't really the way you want to be running a business. Now that there are new games being released, this is the first time that EA Sports has actually been facing any sort of pressure. So we could see some things improve in the future, perhaps, fingers crossed. Finally, one of the worst things that EA Sports has faced and biggest controversial things is lawsuits and whole court cases filed against them by countries. We do have countries such as Belgium, Netherlands, Austria, their governments have not been happy with EA Sports and they have actually taken them on multiple cases to court. All of this is stemming from loot boxes and of course FIFA points because the game has a minimum age restriction of just three years old and there is gambling and it does allow you to of course purchase these FIFA points. It incentivizes you, even pushes you these days towards FIFA points because we do have swaps tokens and other things like that. So it wants you to buy FIFA points, it wants you to open packs and some countries, as you can expect, are not too happy with this. There was a lawsuit in the Netherlands. The Dutch courts fined EA 10 million euros, or at least they were threatening to, but this did get dropped for some reason a little bit later on. Could EA have been involved in that? Maybe they bribed the lawyers or something like that, but that case ended up being dropped. Um, I'm not making any accusations there. I don't know much about it. I just read a couple of headlines, but I do know that in Belgium, since FIFA 19, I do believe it's still even until today. I definitely know FIFA 22. So between FIFA 19 and FIFA 22, you haven't been able to buy any FIFA points because the Belgium government is just against loot boxes. All loot boxes are illegal and they put a lot of pressure on EA to remove FIFA points completely. Now for a long time, the whole question of how does pack luck work? Um, is it all just random or does EA have control of it, etc.? We don't know at all, but the way that EA is positioned, what we have seen in this video is it's strictly focusing on profit. So I can easily see how it could manipulate a few things with red list, um, giving like the YouTubers, streamers better packs to try and put them on a different level and convince uh, viewers and their audience to buy FIFA points, other things like that. I believe there is probably a lot of shady things going on and I do think it is a good idea to have some sort of restrictions on it or some sort of limit, definitely to reduce FIFA points and how much EA are pushing it, especially with the swaps tokens, etc. would be a nice thing, um, but EA lawsuits is definitely up there. Comment down below if I did miss anything out and which one of these things do you think is the worst against EA Sports?